The title this morning says, Guard Your Heart. I want to thank God for our house fellowship, um, Deer Park House Fellowship. As you know, it's the best house fellowship in, in um, the world because I'm part of it. Amen? And our leader, you know, in our house fellowship, we have a new leader every year. So the leader of our house fellowship is Mrs. Adeyeye, and she's doing an awesome job. Amen? So guard your heart. And so when the Bible talks about the heart, it doesn't talk about the physical organ that is on the left side of your upper body, which is your physical heart. That heart is the heart that pumps blood back and forth. I don't want to go deep into that because doctors will start to correct me and nurses will start to take notes. So the heart that the Bible is talking about is your spirit. Amen? It's the spirit of God that operates in you. It's your consciousness. That's how I call it. It's what makes you know. I, was, I listen to people they say, everybody, you don't need to go to Sunday school or to go to church or to know Christ to know good from evil. There's a consciousness of God. There's an essence. This is what I believe. When God says he made us in his image and after his likeness, what he's talking about is the spirit that is encased in this body. And so when you are being told to do something or you are thinking of doing something we call it your heart you know people say they love with their heart i love you with all my heart means that i love you with my entire being my consciousness it's not something tangible it's not something you can touch and that's why when somebody dies that spirit is what goes back either to god or it will go to the devil i pray none of us will miss heaven in Jesus name. So when the Bible tells you. It says guard your heart. And that's my title this morning. One of the challenges we have in ministry today. Especially after COVID. Is this big issue. Of depression. A lot of people. Today. And I'm not talking about I differentiated. There are two types. In my humble estimation. There's medical. And there's the one that's spiritual. So the medical, as far as I know, is a chemical balance. So if there's an imbalance, you can take some medication. It will bring it up to par. But the one that I'm talking about is the spiritual battle that the devil is waging against us. When we were younger, and I tell when I'm advising parents, including myself, I use the example of when I wanted to buy a bicycle. I was a young boy. I went to my mom. Please, can you buy me a bicycle? She said, no. And then anytime I go to my friends, we will ride bicycles with them, their bicycles. But I had no bicycle of my own. Then they will say, well, if you get your first in class, you will buy, we'll buy you a bicycle. And I was not first. If you do this, we'll buy. So I kept wanting to get a bicycle. And then one day, they bought me that bicycle. I was so grateful. I lived on the third floor. After I ride my bicycle, I would take the bicycle, carry the bicycle at about eight years old, up to the third floor, into my room. I washed the bicycle, cleaned the bicycle, oiled the bicycle. I had my tool kit, everything. And the rule was don't ride past the front of the house. Firstly, don't ride outside the compound. But there was no fun in that. The room ride past the street. And I just kept expanding. After some time, I would leave my bicycle downstairs. But one of the things that I now discovered is that because I wanted a bicycle, they gave me conditions. I tried to meet those conditions. But our own children, they don't want a bicycle. When other people have bicycles, we just buy for them. So the child says, I don't want it. Before he buys, he wants, he doesn't need to want a roller skate. You buy it. He doesn't need to want it. So, the, 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 the sense that makes children have that need and have to, they don't have it. So now when they now have too much, there's nothing. The, when I was young, we always wanted something. Forget about the fact that we fetch water in the morning. But our children, they just wake up, they shower. And if there's no hot water, they say, mom, there's no hot water. <laughs> when I was young, nobody tells you how to you go downstairs you fetch the water bring it up you boil the kettle you put it in and if there's no light you bath cold no story nothing to so I, I, i'm not trying to say hardship 
it should be celebrated. But I'm saying that when there's there are no needs, then the mind begins to look for something. And so this is why you see people sit down in front of TV 24 hours and it comes in. They are chatting on WhatsApp or whatever 24 hours. They are looking, talking to people. They were saying in Sunday school that social media can be a source of pressure. You are looking at somebody. I was watching one of these social media posts. The guy was in front of a beautiful car. And um, he was saying, listen, guys, from the bottom to the top, you work hard, you do what you got to do. And they were filming him and he was talking. And the owner of the car just came and entered the car behind him <laughs> and drove off. So when he drove, ah, well, I'm still at the bottom. I'm trying to get to the top. Uh -huh. But somebody that is that boy's colleague or contemporary can put themselves under pressure. Say, look at John. When did John get to um, Lagos? He has already bought a beautiful car. The Bible is the manual of life. And everything you need. I'm going to talk to you this morning about some of the scriptures that I use in guarding my own spirit. Guarding my own heart. What does the Bible say here? It says that, in Galatians 6, 7, I think this is the fundamental scripture. It says, God, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. This is the eternal principle of life. There's no way you can get away from it. If you sow something, you will reap bountifully what you sow. If you sow wickedness, you will reap evil bountifully. If you sow good, you will reap good bountifully. How does this come to do with your heart? If you sow or you allow to be sown in your heart evil, then why is it that you expect good to come out of it? I'm speaking particularly to young people, adults as well, but particularly to teenagers, young people, young adults. What are you allowing into your consciousness? A lot of our young people, you see them, they're walking into the kitchen with their phone. They're walking into the toilet with their phone or their iPad. Your ch our young children, when we are driving them, they're on that iPad throughout. What are they watching? Basketball wives. Programs that glorify homosexuality or that make it normal, that numb it off. Video games where they are killing and killing people and all they are doing is killing, 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 killing. There's one, Grand Theft Auto or something like that. You know? People are, and they say it doesn't matter. And so, as these programs are, are, are the, the devil is in control of the airwaves. And so, if you don't guard your spirit, and that spirit is being bombarded day in, day out, with bad news, with evil, with wrong instruction, then we are wondering where this depression, where this anger, where this hatred, where this lack of zeal is coming from. The Bible is telling us whatever you sow. So are you going to allow anybody to just sow anything into your spirit? If you wake up in the morning, I keep saying this, I've been giving this example forever, and you listen to Sinach, or you listen to Nathaniel Bassi, or you listen to Donny McLaughlin, or you listen to uh, McDowell, or any of these people, Will you be inspired to go and kill somebody? If you listen to the songs that we really like the beat, it says, I pull out my Glock, I cock it, I do this, I go that, I, I pop, pop him five times. I, then when you want to go pop somebody, it, it, and you, you, it, it flows. Amen? When I was younger, you know, and I told, I've told you this, I was, I, I was a fella Anikula Pokuti disciple. There's no fella song I don't know. There's no, there, I used to go to the shrine. I was there. I was, you know, I didn't smoke the weed with them because I was afraid of killing my mom, not killing myself. But I was 
I, I understood and everything till this day I'm influenced by fella. Whether you like it or not. Because there's so much information. Forget the part of him that many people just say, oh, he smoked weed. Don't. But he was a very conscious person. And he was very, he, he was he's highly intent. But guess what it did to me? I told you when I go to youth court camp, when we finish our match parade, what do we do? We sit down, I take my big stout, we open it, we say, ah, animal in human skin, animal in putu suto, and then, I, then we will discuss, then we will argue about Nigeria. You know, go better, you go better, you know, go this, you go. That's what, because that's what comes, and, and believe me, I can't undo. When people say, oh, you're a pastor, there's no fellow song I still don't know. And pastor or no pastor, and I know the ones you don't even know. Because they are shrine recordings that were never released. And they are deep. Because that's what I allowed into my system. You have to guard your heart. Of course, I listen to Bob Marley as well. Because I've always been a, they, they pushed me into this consciousness of my color, of, of the things we had. And apart from the part that I don't like about them, I still, you know, understand what they're saying. Because they're they are saying something. But you have to be careful. A lot of people that have turned out to be murderers, to be killers, to be this, it is based on the influences that were in their lives. You can't be a man or a woman, you are addicted to pornography and you say it doesn't matter. It matters. Because when you say, oh, I'm doing it just to, for my power, it's me and my wife, we watch it together. But the people that are doing it, they are not husband and wife. And after some time, you crave for more and more. And then before you know it, you can go and start acting it out. Because the Bible understands this. It says you should guard your heart. If you look at your heart and your what is going in, you will discover that it's directly related to what is coming out of you. I pray God will give us understanding. Proverbs 4.23 says it in New King James Version. It says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. You can't solve the world's problems. You have to first save yourself. You should keep your heart with all diligence. That means dutifully. You should know what you don't want. When you arrive in certain places and things begin to do certain way, you should be spiritually sensitive to know that this is not the place for me. I'm telling you, when, especially music. If you go to my country, Nigeria now, Afrobeat is huge all over the world. But if you listen to what these boys are saying, and then you see what is going on. Most people don't listen. They love the beat. But you're not listening to the lyrics. If you listen to the lyrics and you see how people have now got disciples and they do all their signs, they throw all their signs and they're, and they're singing it. You know, we have to get that money. Do it. Pull it. Drum it. Throw it. Do this. Cut it. And all of you are dancing. And so this little 16 or 12 year old, he too is... He's dancing all this dance. Oh, yeah, we're doing it. We're moving. And before he, he thinks he's a little gangster. And the parents are saying, you have to study. Say, oh, Naira Mali didn't study anything. He's a billionaire. He has a um, private jet. Oh, Davido didn't study. He's this. He has, because, that, and then it starts, because that heart has been released and they're just taking it in. And when you are children, you don't have the maturity to be able to decipher between true or false. Because you don't have that maturity. This is why you need, the Bible says, train up. Children need to be trained up. So the Bible says we should train up our children in the way that that child should go. So that when that child grows up, but many of us have released the children as if they are already grown up. And even many adults are not guarding their heart. If I call you today after church, hey, my sister, how are you? I didn't see you in church. I said I should greet you. They say, ah, 
I mean, I watched it on, on YouTube, but did you see how Sister Sososo's hair was? My sister, that's not what I called you for. You know, God bless you. I don't think we should. Boom. But when you say, eh, which one? Which hair? I didn't see it all. And then you, you have opened the door. And that person has now got a gossip body. And once you open that door, they begin to flood you. There are some people that every time you call them is bad news. After some time, you need to cut them off because before you know what's going on, they pull you down. They pull you into depression. You try and help them and once you know you can't, you better go and call a pastor or somebody that can, because you are not equipped or you may not be equipped to help that person. Guard your heart. When you wake up in the morning, what do you listen to? I don't even listen to the news. It's not the first thing. The first thing I listen to is a gospel song that will lift me up. There's a beautiful song by Ezekiel Walker. He saw the best in me when everyone else around me could see the worst in me. That kind of song will help you. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so good. Then after you do that, you do your prayer, you join the prayer, then you now listen to what they said happened on the news. As soon as you finish, you switch it up because it's only bad news. Jeremiah 9, 17, 9 to 10. It's going to be a lot of scriptures back to back. The Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. The heart is deep. Another version says, and desperately wicked. Who can search it? You have to guard it because you don't even know what's going on in the mind. I saw a video. Somebody was at a party. They were eating. They were drinking. They were dancing. And the person got up and went away. Came back and had a drink. Later fell down and died. But because somebody else was videotaping somebody else or doing a, you know, everybody has a videotape. Later they saw that the best friend that cried the most at the funeral, that was doing everything, is the one that when this person got up, they dropped something inside. Their face did not display what is in their heart. So because man's heart is deep and desperately wicked, you need to guard your heart so that deep and desperately wicked things don't come into your own heart. I pray God will give us understanding in Jesus' name. How do you guard your heart? You guard your associations. Who do you associate with? Talk to your children. I just sent a text. I said, watch this, please. Who are the people that surround you? I'm telling you there's a beauty. People say negative things about Nigeria. But when I was young, there's a beauty that I found in Nigeria. Because I was in science class. I told you I ended up not doing it. But every single one of my friends, almost all of them, if we were 35 in our class or 25, let's say 20, let's say we were 35. I think we were about 30. About 26 of them are medical doctors. Excelling all over. Big, big. And so when you're around those kind of people, we are pushing each other. So I didn't really do that great. I was an ordinary lawyer. And I have another friend who he didn't do that great. He was a, he's an engineer. And I have another one who now she's doing, um, um, she's an accountant. And she's in, because we're in science class. But all of us that didn't do well, according to science, because we're all supposed to be doctors, we ended up being doctor, accountant, engineer, and all the, I mean, all the of them were doctors, lawyer. Because we were together. We had the same lesson teacher. We did the same things. We encouraged each other because of our association. Don't tell me it doesn't matter. What does the Bible say? Proverbs 27, 17. Please write these scriptures down. You may not open it up today or go back and watch this message and go back to those scriptures. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. The opposite is also true. As wood dulleth iron, so does a wood dull the sharpness of his friend. Do you get what I'm saying? So if you are with somebody that is sharpening you, then both of you will be sharp. 
But if you are with somebody that's always putting you down or putting themselves down, then you are going to be dull. This is what the word of God says. Proverbs 12, 26. Proverbs 12, 26 says, The righteous choose their friends carefully. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. I'm appealing to you. I went to a seminar um, in the city long some time ago. And the girl said, who's your squad? The woman was a black something, some professional. I said, you need to sit down after this message and ask yourself, who is my squad? What's the squad? Who is in my team? I'm not talking about your brother and your sister, your family, children. Who are the three people that are in your life? The six people that you know they've got you down. Then examine them. Then he will tell you who yourself, who you are. If all your friends and you are in trouble, they cannot raise $1,000 to help you out of that trouble. You don't have friends yet. You should have three categories of friends. How many people remember when I taught on that? You should have friends that are like mentors. The ones that are where you want to go. So that they can encourage you and show you so that you take, you skip steps. Then you should have friends that are the same level at you, as you. So that both of you encourage each other because you are going up. But they may not even be able to help you up. But the one that's helping you up there, but you can hustle together. Then you should have those friends that you are their mentors. Not the ones that will pull you down, but the ones that you are also pulling up. And this is the cycle. But some people, all their friends are below them. And they trample on them. So whenever they go into a room, they are the best people in the room. They are the most intelligent people. In the room. You are in trouble. You need people that are smarter than you to sharpen you up so that you will be smart. You need mentors. So who is your squad? There was one day I was in Nigeria. I was, I was going to leave Nigeria the next day. And I started having this stomach problem. It was just pain, pain, pain. And my flight was like 5, 6 a.m. Early in the morning, I was supposed to leave the house at 5. And I was in excruciating pain. Then I started Googling. I called my wife. She's in America. She was panicking. So I said, oh, this is not solving the problem. And then, so my cousin, they, started, they said, I have to go. So I Googled. And in my Googling, he said, it may be kidney stones. You know, now we are Google age. I figured it out myself. It must be this. If, the, if you, I'm sweating, so I wore my clothes because I didn't want to go to the hospital naked. I quickly, while I still had strength, I did everything. And I walked. I struggled to the next house, my, my auntie's place. I banged on the door. I told them, oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. So, they, so they grabbed me. So we, they rushed. On the way to the airport, I was still. So I called one of my cousins, my mentor. He came here. I did breakfast, um, men's breakfast for us one time. Good guy. So I called him. I said, brother, I told you. I'm on the way to the hospital. Hoo, 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 hoo. And I told him everything. That's my squad. He's a mentor. There's something that he could do about it. By the time I got to the hospital, he said, which hospital are you going to? I said, this one, this one, this one. By the time I got to the hospital and they figured it out, I was really kidney stones and gave me injection and gave, calmed me down. He was there. By the time... I told them they have to release me because I have to travel because I'm an American and I'm, in, I'm not staying like this. And they were telling me, oh, you can't do this. I said, I, had, I know my right. And I went, you know, as soon as you are okay, a little bit, you have sense. I started talking. The doctor was so disgusted. But guess what? I made that flight. I'm like, listen, I have to go. But I wanted to pay. And I said, how much is the bill? They said, oh, the man that came last night, he has paid. Nice word. Who's your squad? Who is in your team? Are they gossipers like you? Not going anywhere. You just gossip together. You abuse people together. Oh, Nigeria will never be good. Oh, the church is useless. Oh, the, the Monday is Monday. Tuesday is Tuesday. What will it do for you? Somebody that will help you. Somebody that both of you are together. And some people that you are going to help up. Oh, I don't think I have time to be able to preach. You. Ah, God help me. Okay, let me rush. Proverbs 13, 20. I'm just going to give you the scriptures. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Walk with the wise. Who are the people you are walking with? People that are going to beat up boyfriend and baby mama and this and that. People that are always going to steal. They are going to steal. Then you, 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 they are just my friends from school. 
Dad, you don't like any of my friends. Yes, I don't like any of your friends because all these boys you are hanging around with are criminals. I see them selling at the street corner. I see, you know. If you don't want your, your son to come up the way you don't want him to come up, you say, oh, dressing down. It matters. Guard your heart. Don't let these children start hanging their pants down here. They are living in your house. They are not paying bills. Don't let them start wearing all sorts of things and doing all sorts of things. Don't they are doing all this. Where, where do you think that is going? Have you ever been to the hospital and you are sick and the doctor will start throwing gang signs and start hanging his pants down? Will you let him touch you? So how can you expect your son that is going like this up and down? How do you expect him to be a doctor that you are praying that he should be? I'm not saying he has to be. I'm just saying that you know. Because you have to guard. If these are the things he's seen, bring your children to church. You are not, it's not your tithe. We don't need your tithe. God has already ordained the people that will bring their tithe to bring the church moving forward. 100% of people don't pay tithe anyway. No more than 20% pay tithe. And the 20% are the ones that carry all the 100%. Go bring your children to church. Let them hang around other children. Let them fear God. If you don't allow that to be the issue of their life, the Bible says man's heart is deep. I just saw some news. This guy, some 80-year-old man they arrested. He has been killing people for about 40 years. And he will chop them up and he has been eating them. He was in the news for years. But his neighbor heard a lot of noise. They said every night he's always sawing things up. And when they went there, the police said he was covered in blood. And he will, he will order pizza. And when the pizza man comes, he will just kill the pizza man. Order this one. When they deliver, and he has been killing them and eating them. And I'm sure to his neighbors, he's a nice man. Because man's heart is deep and desperately wicked. Proverbs 17, 17. It says, a friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. Brothers and sisters, guard what you hear, what you see, what you are around, and what you read and where you go. Online and in, in the physical flesh. Where if I go to your search history today, that's why people are married to their phone. It's my phone. Don't touch my phone. It's my privacy. It's because there's something in that phone that tells us your real character that is different from your reputation. Your reputation is what people think about you. Your character is who you are. And Miles Monroe used to say, that character and reputation, if it's the same, you're good. If it is different, there's a problem. Many of us, our reputation is different from our character. Where do you go? What do you watch? Is it going to be a problem? The Bible says in Philippians 4.8, this is the core of the message. Then I run through about 15 Bible passages that I really use to encourage myself. That I used to guard my heart. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Do you meditate? What are the things you think about? Are you always thinking of evil? Are you always considering bad things? But the Bible is warning you. It says whatsoever things are true. Stand on the truth. You have to have integrity. Don't allow other people to take charge of your heart. Don't react. Be firm in your core principles. And when you know who you are, nobody will be able to move you. This is why the Bible talks about putting your hand on the plow and not looking back. Don't be blown to and fro. Don't be double-minded. 
Genesis 1, 26 to 31, I'm not going to read. That is my foundational scripture. Genesis 1, 26 to 31. For you to be able to guard your heart, you first have to know who you are. Who am I? Do you know what I tell myself every morning? Even when I was 50, my daughter bought me a keychain and she put Genesis 1, 26 to 31. I am created in the image and after the likeness of God. I don't care what you think. You can, can hate my color. You can hate my accent. You can hate my look. You can hate my walk. I, Olure Mio Shikonlu, I am created in the image and after the life. I tell you, when I'm afraid, and I, I get afraid once in a while, when I'm in a, a tight corner, I remember the first time I was before a judge in this country. I've never, I, never, I, I just came here, I hustled, hustled, hustled. Did, and I would go to court. I had no court appointment. I would just be sitting there listening to what they say. So one day, one day, your, your, they will, your case will come. So that day, my knees were, but I just went to the toilet. I said, I'm created in the image and after the likeness of God. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a child of God. Ah, Remy or Shikonlu, this is the day that the Lord has made. You, you may think I'm not well. You may think that was doing him. That's what's doing. That's how. And I checked myself. Then I, sh you can't understand. Then I scream. Ah! Then I look around. Then I, then I went. <laughs> then I went. <laughs> And, and, I, and it was in nothing. I just said, uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Oluremi Lekwa Shikonlu. Um, for the plaintiff. The guy said, um, can you spell the name? O for orange, L for... And I spelled my name. They said, okay, stand the case down. Uh, next. I said, is that it? Then the next time I went, I didn't have to... But you have to have something. You have to have a core that you go to. I am created in the image and after the likeness of God. And this is what I love the most. This is my own. He gave me dominion. Go and read it. Over everything. The one in the air, the one in the water. That's why I don't believe in juju. And it cannot work for me. And it cannot work against me. It may work against other people. It can never touch me. Because greater is he that is in me than he, I'm not arguing with you whether it exists. That's your business. If you want to be sleeping and fighting, oh, me. Mm -mm. There are some songs in my mind. Any little problem. I am what I am. I am what I am. I am what I am. By the grace of the Lord. I will never fail. I will never fall. I will reach the top. By the, and I changed the song up. I will reach my goal. I can anything. I will sing it for me. You have to know God and trust him. So Genesis 1 and he said when he finished building us, he said it was good. Is that not what the Bible said? Then he blessed me. So if I am blessed, who can curse me? It's not arrogance. It's the word of God. Number two scripture that I like, Psalm 139 verse 14. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. If you don't have confidence you are fearfully and wonderfully made, they will make you feel inferior. Amen? And we live in a racist country. Some of you don't want to believe it. Yes, we do. Even in Ukraine, our people, Nigerian and African students that went to pay foreign fees, foreign fees, they are paying money in Ukraine. How can you imagine? And there is war in Ukraine. And the president of the university cannot gather together all the foreign students and start to appeal that I will not leave this university campus until these children leave. No. They left these children alone. 18 year olds, 19 year old black, and they were kicking them off the train. Kicking them off the train frustrating them and these people when they, they paid fees those kind of children can be damaged so you have to help them to know talk to your children say you are better than the best because you are a child of God let them be proud of who they are because they cannot change it them wishing they were white will not help them because they will never be white you are already black so make the best of it amen oh I wish I had time <laughs> Number three, Abby. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Romans 
And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, indeed we suffer with him that we may be glorified together. These are scriptures that I used to first know. You have to first know who you are. So I know that I'm an heir of Christ. I know that I'm adopted. I know that I'm engrafted. I know that he has put me in. I know that nobody can take me out. I know this is the confidence I have in the God that I serve. So if you don't first start from that premise, anything will just shake you this way. You don't want to be shaken. Tell your children to know who they are. Begin to tell them who they are. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. They are a royal priesthood, a peculiar nation. They have been brought forth from darkness into his marvelous light. You are, oh, just encourage each other and encourage yourself in the Lord. Number five scripture that I like, Matthew 5, 16. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. Don't be so... It's not meekness for you to be foolish. Just be walking about as if you, they, they call you to come to the front. You see? No, I'm in the front. Whenever they call me, I'm coming. Because I'm a member of the front. Amen? I'm, I'm just when, when you, if you don't call me, I may stay. Home. But in the back, I'm already knowing that that's, this place is not for me. It's just like when you fly. If you never plan to fly first class, people. We are going to arrive there on the same time. We are going to arrive there on the same day. Don't mind them. If you find first class, it's poverty that's doing you. It's poverty that's doing you. If you try it once, when I bought my Volkswagen B2 back in the day, when I bought it, 14,500 naira. I bought it. I had Spanner. I had this. I when I bought another type of vehicle 20 years later, before, when I was driving the B2, I used to say, car is car. But when you drive another type of car, car is not car. Car is not car. You are just not there yet. Don't kill yourself to get there. You understand what I'm saying? So, so you need to understand who you are. Number six. Is it number six? Yes. Luke 10, 19. Write it down because we are going to like 15 or 16. Luke 10, 19. Be, behold, give you... I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I remember one day somebody was threatening me with all this nonsense. They said, look, don't be careful. Lord. It was actually my wife. They said, hmm, this person, that person, if they do juju for you, my wife said, nonsense. Tell the person that I will trample on scorpions, I will trample on... Me too, I started jumping. What nonsense? Bring the juju, we throw it away. Nothing will happen. It's for the people that are already, if you are in the coven with them, then it will, it will work. Yeah. But when we are not with you, and we are with God, and the God that we are with is more than your own, then why should I be worried about your own? Too many of us spend too much time worrying about nonsense. But I know why. It's because you are not even sure of where you are. If you are sure, if you stand with Christ, then why are you worrying yourself? That doesn't mean that if they are doing Shongo Festival, you will now say that you want to go and sit down and eat all their food. Leave them to do their thing. You focus. But if they come near me, <clears throat> fire will burn them. Deuteronomy 28, 13. Deuteronomy 28, 13. And the Lord will make you head. And not you see the scriptures I like. Are you seeing how my mentality is shaped? The Lord will make Oluremi or Shikonlu head and not tail. I will be above only and not beneath. And and the condition is that I must heed the word of God. So that's what I'm working towards. I'm always head. I can never be tail. By the grace of God. Number eight, Mark eleven twenty three to twenty four. Mark eleven twenty three to twenty four. For assuredly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you do, what you ask when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. All that scripture is saying, believe, trust God. Some people don't ask. You have not because you ask not. They don't ask. They say, we are managing. It's so, so, why should you manage? Say, God, take me to the mountaintop. 
There's a beautiful song that, that says in my language that I'm tired of the, of the bottom, that I want to go to the top. These are the songs I like. So when I, because I'm not depressed, I can never be depressed in the mighty name of Jesus, but when I'm bordering on what people may consider depression, I will go and look for this song. It's a letty soup. If you like, mm. Bemi Lossi, Ibi Giga. You may not understand what I'm saying. I say, Oh, Luwajo. Whoa. Wag Bemi Soke. Then I'll say it to myself again. Eh? It's a letty soup. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Then I get up again. I say, Hey, Remy, now let's go back. Then we go back. What nonsense? Where are you coming from? You have no place in my life. It's a conscious decision. I decide to guard my spirit. I decide to guard my heart. I don't like bad news people. I don't like people that are always trying to pull things down. What are you going to do about it? Nigeria is no good. Go and give scholarship. We have been doing it. To the glory of God. 20 students, medical students, we are sending them to school through the foundation. About 15 or 16 law students. They are going to school. Instead of you, what's my own with Buhari? I don't know him. And I'm not ready to go and fight. So do your own. Amen? Whatever it is, get your mind right. Don't dwell in problem. Look for solution. That's why I don't have problem. I have challenges. When a challenge, when I'm confronted with a challenge, I say, hey. Then I go to the scripture to look for the solution. And it's there. This is just a spectrum of them. James 1, 6 to 8. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It says, but let him ask in faith with no, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. I use that to charge myself that whatever I'm looking for, I should ask in faith. Believing that God will do it. Because God has already told me that if I'm double-minded, I won't get it. So that's why I look at many people when you ask them a question and say, ah, I don't know. Maybe God, ah. Then God says, you don't know. If you don't know, why should God know? I'm going. I'm going to get it. I'm going to pass that exam. You do the work. And ask God to back you up. Number 11, Abby. 10. No, number 10 is this James. Ah. Okay, okay. Nine, the real nine in my notes is James 4.3. I didn't say that. I skipped it. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend on your pleasures. So that's number nine. Number 10 is James 1.6-8. So number nine is James 4.3. What, what are you asking God for? You ask amiss. You ask that God should be killing your enemy. What's your business with your enemy? Do you know the prayer I like? He prepares a table. That's my own. I love. I'm, I'm, he prepares a table for me. Then I'll put my name. I don't know about other people. He prepares a table for Uluremi in the presence of his enemy. In the presence. And there's nothing they can do about it. Let them stand at attention while we are eating. They go and bring the water. And nothing will happen. Why? Because he has given me power to tread over snakes and scorpions. Number 11, Isaiah 54, 17. Everybody knows. No weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of who? The servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Listen to me. Do you know one of the problems I meet with all these, especially young people, even old people, they, say, they are talking about me. They are gossiping. Then you are depressed that your BFF for life. What nonsense is that? Old people have BFF for life. What's their best friend for life at your age? You are having best friend for life. Instead of encouraging your daughter not to have or your son not to have, because that best friend will disappoint her. Then they go into depression. Oh, the Bible has already given us an answer. It says no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. He says that every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. So once you build yourself up knowing that even Jesus 
This is how I think. Jesus walked with 12, right? Who is Jesus? God, Abby. Who is Jesus? Savior. Who is Jesus? Everything. He walked with 12 and yet one was a devil. Then you, you are walking with 44. And you are crying about one devil. Don't you know that in every 12, you must have a traitor? Didn't you read Julius Caesar when you were in school? Don't you know that when he ran to Brutus, he put the knife inside him? Haven't you learned that people that have Godfather politically, after some time, them and their Godfather will fight? Don't you see? So why are you now going to enter depression? Guard your heart in advance. As you are doing friend with me, I've already said, ah, this is my, I don't have friends a lot, acquaintances. This is my greedy, let's use friend because it makes people feel better. My greedy friend, my jealous friend, my envious friend, my always sad friend, my encourager friend, my, you understand? So know everybody for who they are. Then guard your heart because your greedy friend will continue to be greedy except Jesus take over his heart. He may even be a pastor, but he's just a greedy guy. That's his own struggle. So, the day he now does something to you to show he's greedy, because you understand who he is and you've guarded your heart against it, will it hurt you? Mm -hmm. But you keep hoping that she will change. You and her are gossip. You've been gossiping about everybody in the world. Then finally, because you are clueless, you discover that she has been also gossiping about you to one of the other fellow gossips, then you go into depression. You snatched him or you snatched her from her boyfriend or from... You snatched, you snatched, you knew they were in a relationship. You use your money, you use your power, you use your charisma, you use your good looks, your six-pack, you grabbed her from somebody. Then you are managing. Then one day, you know, your car is still three years old. Somebody with a bigger car now grab her with a 12 pack. Then you enter, you enter depression. Didn't you know that what you were sowing, you will reap? Uh -huh. So too many, all this crying is just, you know, number 12, right? Psalm 118, 17 to 29. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You can read the rest of it. You declare. You want life. You want God to be with you. You would make your declaration. Isaiah 53, 5. That's number 12. Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. You pray that prayer for yourself. I am healed by his stripes. Save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. For thou art my... Heal me, O Lord... I shall be healed, for thou art my praise. I think that's Jeremiah 17, 4, or something like that. Amen? You, you declare it. These are the scriptures you want. Um, Proverbs the, um, pro, um, number 13, Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. 29. says, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings and not unknown, before unknown men. You have to be diligent in your business. If you are sloppy in your business, don't expect anything good. You celebrate great people. Do you know what they did? I talked about it last week. Dr. Martin Luther King was busy finishing college. He entered college at the age of 15. And we like him. Pastor Adeboy has PhD in mathematics and he has like three masters in mathematics. What, do you like it? But are you ready to put in the work? If you are diligent, so I use it to encourage myself, Remy, you have to be diligent in your business. You have to work hard at it. You have to go for it. Everybody keeps telling me, oh, your own is too much. Your, leave, let them be, say, I should have done it this way. You should have, leave them. They are spectators. You are a competitor in the affairs of your own life. I don't, I'm not a spectator. I don't like spectator sports. I like to be part of it. Part of that number 13, um, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, it says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should they eat. If you don't work, you should do eat. Go and look for work. Number 14, Matthew 19.26, Matthew 19.26, But Jesus looked at them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God 
all things are possible. When you hit the dead end and everybody tells you, ah, it's over, just agree that you are finished. <laughs> I say, with you, it's impossible. But with the God I serve, all things are possible. If it requires me not to sleep, I will not sleep. I will stay in the place of prayer, believing God. If it requires me to fast, I will fast because with you, it's not possible. But with God, all things are possible. There is no impossibility in my vocabulary. It may not be time for me to do it. But there's nothing you can tell me that I cannot do. If a man could wake up and decide to fly when there were no planes and we are flying all over the world today. If a man could decide that we are going to put a man on the moon and they put a man, can you believe? They put a human being on the moon. Then you are telling me about impossibility. If a man could take out somebody's heart and take another heart and put it in, you are telling me about impossibility. Do you know that these scientists, they took a pig's heart. Don't only be reading the Bible. They took a pig's heart. They pumped it with some things, did some things, did, and put it in a man. The man just died. He died. But he lived for like two, three months or something. Uh -huh. The next one will be six months. The next one will be one year. The next one will be ten years. They remove kidney, put people, another person's kidney. They are predicting that it will snow. Sometimes they fail. You, you'll be correct. Uh, the, the weatherman is always lying. What have you predicted in your own life? Are they not trying? They predict earthquake. Nothing is impossible. It's just laziness. Stop blaming anybody. You are the one. If you believe God, the Bible says, this is, this is my own book. The book says to me, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. My friend tell me, you are fooling yourself. I say, yes. And my foolery has been working for me. Let me continue to fool myself to greater heights. Can you imagine if somebody told anybody in 1985 or so and said, uh, this church in uh, Butemeta on Cemetery Street in the middle of sawdust, this church will be all over the world. I was in Butemeta in 1930, 19, 1991. That's when I joined Redeem. And Pastor Adeboye was our pastor. He used to come to the church. The building was not, it was like this bungalow. I, used to, I told you, our eyes would be full of smoke because there was a sawmill. And they put fire to that summit all day, all night. It's just smoke. Just a, not a nice place at all. I used to wonder, what's wrong with my auntie that took us to the church? I said, oh, and there are churches in VI, Ikoyi, air condition, everything. We used to go. Then Pastor Adeboye will say, one day we are going to build a city on kilometer 46 on the express road. We are going to do this. Some of you looking at me here, you are going to be pastors in America. You are going to be pastors in England. You are going to be, the church will go. There are every family in the world. We, I just used to look at him with cross eye. Like this one, <laughs> when he finished <laughs> fooling them. But me, you know, like I told, I told you the truth, because I'm a fella guy, there was a guy, Pastor John Omenwa. He's in, he's in Dallas now. I think he's a regional pastor. He used to play for fella. So when I saw him in the church, I said, ah, <laughs> This church is not so bad. I mean, we're rocking in the world. We're rocking in the church. We, we rock together. And he will just be singing. It. And Kuli Ajayi will just be blowing his eye. I will say, oh, wow. So when Gio is preaching, I will just be looking at those ones. Because they will sing. They will dance. And they will dance like this. He will, ah. I say, God. Then I dance my old, you know, fella dance in this church. Not knowing that God was using them just for me. Everything the man said. In 1991, came to pass. Go to redemption camp now. Inside Redeem, I think they have about five or six churches, parishes, inside the camp. They have banks, they have, it's a city. And in those days, it was bush. What is impossible is only for men. I 
ask God to show you his blueprint for your life. And I beg, beg him that you will believe it. Because he may show you and you don't even believe it. Now, if you don't believe it, how will it come to pass? Number 15. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty heart or spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. And then James 4, 6 is part of that same one. He says, but he gives grace, more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And number 16, Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38, he says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give to your bosom with the same measure that you use will be measured back to you. How does that not go back to the beginning? He says, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow is what you reap. You are a brother-in-law. You are wicked to your sister-in-law. Don't worry. Continue. Because he will package it for you. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Mother-in-law. Press down. Package together. Running over. If you are a good mother-in-law. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. If you are a good friend. Press down. Shaking together. It's not about money. Money is just one of the things you can give. You can give a listening ear to somebody that wanted to commit suicide. You can give counsel to someone that is going astray. You can give love to someone that is unloved. You can give shelter to someone that is homeless. They will give it to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Then you begin to look at them and envy them. For you to have an extraordinary life, you have to believe the word of God. Whose report will you believe? That's what the Bible asks. I say, and I agree with the Bible, I will believe the report of the Lord. His report says, I am healed. And his report says, I have victory. The scripture today says, rejoice. I say, rejoice. And this is our theme for this month. I want you to rise to your feet. I don't know whose report that you believe. Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. If you want these scriptures to work for you, you must give your life to Christ. If you have given your life to Christ before, you must rededicate yourself to Christ. If you have rededicated yourself to Christ, then this is the place. This is the time. This is the season. This is the moment that God wants to take you from where you are to where you ought to be. But you must use the word of God for God. You must believe the word of God because the word of God is infallible. Instead of listening to the world, listen to God. Guard your heart. Iron sharpens iron. Your association, a wise man, the Bible says, chooses his friends carefully. I ask you this morning, who is in your squad? Who are the first three people you will call when challenges come? If those three people are not people that can help you by praying for you, by being a blessing to you, if, if you don't have somebody that, God forbid, something happens and you can run into their house, you have no friends. Who? Most of your people are acquaintances. I pray that God will give us wisdom. I want you to talk to God this morning. That this word would not just come into your heart and leave. That these scriptures, that you will go back and begin to prophesy them into your life. That you will begin to claim these scriptures. That if there's anybody here that has backslided or has gone back, that the almighty God will touch them. I want you to make a commitment to God today. A commitment that he will be with you. That he will guide you. That he will protect you. That he will surround you with his head of fire. And that you will obey him. That that spirit of obedience, that God will deposit it into your heart. That whatever weapon that has been fashioned against you shall not prosper. That the hand of God will be upon you for miracle signs and wonders. That the almighty God will bless your going out and your coming in. That the almighty God will make you head and you will not be tail. That he will grant you more grace. That he will give you the spirit of humility. The spirit of humbleness. In the mighty name of Jesus. That when you ask, you will ask in faith. 
I want you actually to begin to ask God now. Those things that you want him to do for you in the month of March, those things that you want him to do for you this year, remember with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I want you to talk to God about the impossibilities in your life. In your life, whether it is sickness, whether it is in your marriage, whether it is with your children, whether it is with your health, whether it's with your finances, whether it's with your walk with God. At God that you believe him and you take him at his word. And God will bless you. God will be with you. The almighty God will answer your prayers. And the almighty God will be with you and your family. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.